Managing the zoonotic risk, and this gets really tricky because like everything, we are constantly mitigating risk in interacting with our companion animals. And so I think it's really important that there is some staff and volunteer education about the risks with toxoplasmosis and lots of the other parasites that our, our fuzzy little creatures may share with us. The most prone to issue, women of childbearing age, if they have not previously been exposed to toxoplasmosis, they are at the greatest risk. Um, immune compromised, and we don't always, we don't necessarily have the right to ask people if they have diseases that make them immune compromised, but I'll remind you that some people have an immune compromise, uh, a disease that may compromise their immune system all the time, but any one of us with an illness could be immune compromised. Chemotherapy, other sorts of treatments make us immune compromised. Um, and so it's important, I think, that we communicate that to our staff and our volunteers. Hand washing, hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. If you need another thing to add to the list for why people should wash their hands, um, add toxoplasma to your list. And then adopter counseling, really making sure that, that um, our adoption staff know how to discuss risk um, and potential exposure with potential adopters. So the worst, case, um, the worst cases that we've talked about with toxoplasma, and most of you know, how many people knew toxoplasmosis in pregnant women? Like that's the thing that sticks out in your head. Yeah, because those are the worst cases that we see. And so we talk a lot about making sure that pregnant women um, aren't exposed, and I'll, I'm gonna break this down for you. Pregnant women aren't exposed to cats that might be shedding toxoplasmosis. And that's because the congenital infections in humans are pretty awful. They're severe disease. And what needs to happen is that a woman needs to be exposed to the shedding oocysts, and she needs to have not had a previous exposure. So she doesn't have antibodies. She gets exposed to a shedding cat in that window of time when she gets pregnant, and then the fetus is affected. That is how it happens, all right? It's worse if, they are, if you are exposed at the third trimester than in the first trimester. So the worst defects occur in the third trimester. And they're pretty bad. We're talking about spontaneous abortion. We're talking about brain birth defects, um, retinal malformations, hydrocephalus, which is fluid in the head. We're talking about very, very serious disease. And I was surprised, because I had no idea that the rate was this high. But in the US, it's reported that between one and seven in every 10,000 births is actually, the babies are serolo serologically positive. So they have toxoplasmosis at birth. That's a much higher rate than I had thought because I feel like we don't hear about it very often. Um, especially if you look at that, that one in 10,000 is about uh, the rate of vaccine or injection site sarcomas in cats. And how many of you have heard about that? <laughs> Like we all talk about injection site sarcomas and making sure that we're, we're being careful with how we inject our cats. I had no idea the rate was that high. About 40% of those will actually have disease, but that's still a fairly high number. And if this is your child, this is your baby, that is, I can't even imagine how devastating that is. So here's your quiz question. When a cat owning woman gets pregnant, who needs a toxoplasmosis titer test? Her cat, the woman, both or neither? This is when you get to play Dr. House. And he's not very good. It takes him like four diseases <laughs> before he gets to what the problem is. And then he calls toxoplasmosis a fungus. So let's see if you're better. Good, so B, we're split between B and C. So we're split between the woman and both. The recommendation is really the woman. And I'll tell you why as we go through the, I think my scenarios are next. Um, if you are childbearing age, thinking about getting pregnant, exposed to cats on a regular basis, especially in a shelter because you bring home a bunch of cats, it's about your serology. It's about whether you have antibodies or not. If you have already been previously exposed and you have antibodies, they are thought to be protective. So even if you are exposed while you're pregnant, your body already has antibodies that will protect you. Does that make sense? And so, oh, let's go through this one. When a pregnant woman gets toxoplasmosis, titer performed, which result puts her fetus at greater risk for acquiring congenital toxoplasmosis? I think I just answered that question for you. If there, she's positive for antibodies, if she's negative for antibodies, or they are of equal risk. Now I'll see who was listening. Good. So if she is negative for antibodies, that puts her at greatest risk. That means she hasn't been exposed previously, she doesn't have protection. Good, excellent, you guys are awesome. 
So now, opinion question. <laughs> Pregnant women should get rid of their cats. True, false, or you're a libertarian. It's a free country. They can do whatever they want. Yay, 88%. 88% of you say, indeed, no, they should not get rid of their cats, and that is the most popular opinion for sure. Um, and it is a free country. As her doctor, I'd probably say you can do what you want, but I think it's important people have accurate information. And a lot of people get inaccurate information from their physicians. No offense intended for Dr. House and the other MDs out there. But it's about mitigating risk again, and the truth is, is that if they are if they are positive, they are most likely protected. And then there are some other things you can do other than get rid of your cats. Because there's no reason to believe that the cat that you've lived with for a long time is necessarily any greater risk to you than it was yesterday. Um, but there are some things we can do to kind of work that out. 